Disclaimer, I do not dislike CinemaSins, and that is not a lie. For my next Everything Wrong with CinemaSins video, I'm going to be seeing a video on the Mitchells vs. the Machines, and I would like to give a thanks and dedication to Mason J.W. Myers for requesting this video. Enjoy the video, everybody. I'm all for customizing quirky logos, and for the Columbia lady showing a little more leg, but this is just a regular piece of pepperoni pizza. The cheeseburger gets eyes and arms, but you can't even throw a few mushrooms on the pizza slice? Well, if that's what the movie is showing us, then that's what the pizza slice looks like. Good Get is a great takeoff name of Best Buy. It combines both alliteration, meaning, and exact letter count of each word. But the stop sign has an exceedingly long pull, so my hands are kind of tied here. Another instance of Jeremy seeing something he likes. Oh, hey! I bet you're wondering how this sin got here. Well, let me take you back to a few seconds ago when this movie played the A Few Days Earlier card. The trend of starting your movie in medias res is so prevalent and annoying now that I have to sin when even good movies do it. We should all be caught up now. You may think this movie trend is annoying, but that doesn't mean that others also think that, so I'm going to be giving this my award. Behold! Cinema! This movie is going to make this appear to be a crudely edited together film that a grade schooler might do. But that opening title card, pretending to just be a burger wrapper, has animation effects on the words. Meaning this kid learned how to do frame by frame animation on a freaking burger wrapper. And while I guess that's possible, if she can do that, why is the rest of the homemade video so lo fi? Because part of how Katie makes her movies is that she uses puppets for the characters she creates. Has this movie met a fourth grader? These kids would be dying laughing at this movie. The movie wants us to feel sorry for Katie, so they will mock her instead. Well, this part of the movie Katie narrates that she never fit in, so the kids laughing at her here are supposed to show that. The movie refuses to show us any of Space Butt's origins. Yeah, but a lot of the other films shown here aren't presented to the audience in this film. The one we mainly see is Good Cop, Dog Cop. I poured everything I had into getting into film school in LA. Weird, they let almost anyone into film school, so you are overachieving for no reason. But if the movie is saying that Katie had to work hard to get into the school, then that's what happened. Having 23 tabs open when you aren't actively writing on a sin script. Personally, I don't think that matters. I mean, I have a lot of tabs open on my computer, don't really care that it's a lot. After all these years, I'm finally gonna meet my people. Is that when the narration will stop? Because I'm beginning to wonder if this entire movie is narrated. Firstly, yes, the narration does stop here. Secondly, the whole movie is not narrated. There's a trend in recent mostly Disney animated movies where the pet is funny just because the pet is stupid. Like Hey Hey, or Doug, or Pico. I'm not saying dumb animals aren't funny, but they're kind of repetitive. See this from the Lego Movie video. Show literally mentions a YouTube video earlier, but Katie's uploading all her stuff to Pal Video? Yeah, and YouTube as well. I, I know, I'm Mark but Bowman, you're just founder and CEO of Pal Labs. Expositional video ads. What if the Mitchells had paid for Pal Video Premium? How would we ever know what was going on then? This ad is necessary because the Pal Lab robots are a main part of the story because they caused the uprising on Pal's Wars. Otherwise, how would the later scene with the robot presentation be explained? Bathed in ghoulish blue light. You see, it's funny because they're all buried in their phones, paying him no attention, and this is the first time anyone has ever made this joke. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening in this scene. I just wonder, do you really think you can make a living with this stuff? Look, this movie is hilarious and creative, but it's also super tropey. At its skeleton, this is pretty much the same as every kid is misunderstood by a parent who thinks that they should do something more practical movie recipe we've seen before, but with a wacky robot apocalypse glaze on it to try and sweeten the experience. Yeah, that's what this movie's story is. So what's the sin here? And of course, this camcorder will be powered up and this tape will be at the exact place in the father-daughter highlight reel to elicit maximum emotional impact, because movies. Well, yeah, Rick's looking at these to look back at his memories with Katie so that he can think of a way to fix his relationship with her. Now Dad is springing an unwanted family road trip on everyone. And this movie is eventually quite unique and clever, but there's a hell of a lot of tired tropes and jokes in the setup. But Linda and Aaron are willing to go on the road trip, meaning that Katie's the only one not on board to go. But also, Mom's dropping the ball here. Last night she nailed it when she told Dad he had to fix things with Katie. Now he's come up with this awful idea that robs Katie of a week of college fun with her new friends and Mom is digging it. See the big picture, Mom. Oh, so I guess you think that's more important than a father trying to bond with his daughter one last time before she leaves to go to college? We call the school, you can miss orientation week. No problem! Wait, what? I was almost willing to go with this nonsense as typical forced movie plot movement, but you pulled her out of orientation week? That's next level selfishness, and honestly makes me wonder if Rick is even redeemable at this point. Rick does have a character arc in this film. He's technophobic, and he has to get over it at the end of the film when he tries to screen share Katie's dog movie to take out the Pal Lab robots. There was nowhere to park this close to the St. Louis Arch. Rick Mitchell probably killed nine people driving through a crowded park. We never see that in this movie, so where are you getting that from? Wait, they're private emails? That's a dangerous overreach of corporate power. <laughs> Tech CEO is a mustache-twirling villain who trades people's privacy for a fatter bottom line truth. I mean, truth. Sorry. I'm trying to say cliche, but it keeps coming out weird. Okay... 
I love how in movies technology is like, well, we've got robots now, so I guess anti-gravity rays would also be a thing, right? Yeah. So? I need to speak to the manager. Ah! These dinosaurs are inaccurate! <laughs> Aaron would be excellent at roadside tourist trap sims. But this is a dinosaur-themed roadstop cafe, not a tourist trap. You're not even trying. Meow, 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 meow. Does the filter also somehow mute real life? Pure magicians working over there at Snapchat, huh? That's not what the movie's showing you, just the fact that this app can add special effects onto someone's face and add noises as well. The posies? Yep, not only are your neighbors somehow in the same area as you after you've been on a three-day road trip, they just so happen to stop at the exact same dinosaur-themed cash grab as you. Howard Ratner wouldn't even play those odds if Kevin Garnett was holding a lucky dino-themed keychain. Aside from the pop culture reference, this part of the film isn't something convenient to the story, so you're just pointing something out in the film. Not only do they all survive this, not a single person is shown with a shard of glass sticking out of their cheek. It's a single, grotesque flesh wound too much to ask, Lord Miller. I agree with the first part of your sin, but for the second part, a flesh wound would be too much to ask since this is an animated family film. Three sin landings! I mean, three point landing. Maybe I got it right the first time. You got it right the second time, and also you're just pointing something out on the screen here. Now we're doing the, we found the thing that controls a robot on the ground, and now we use it to try to defeat the robot, but it will go comically thing from The Incredibles. How can a movie be super original and still steal bits and pieces from bunches of other Disney movies? But the difference here is that what Katie's using to try to take down the robots is one of their hands, which doesn't control the robots. Maybe this would be less horrifying with the cat filter. <laughs> This movie's hilarious, but I have to ask, if she's producing this documentary, where the hell is she getting all these shots from? Well, we're not seeing this part of the movie through Katie's camera, so she isn't recording it. Also, seeing something you like. In case you confused it with Paris Hilton, Tokyo Drift, or San Francisco, California. Like the Birdman said in his Iron Man 3 video, this gag only works if the place you're confusing it with isn't a place that exists in real life. Paris Hilton is a real person, Tokyo Drift is actually a movie, and San Francisco is, in fact, a real place. And even though your Shang-Chi video gave me the impression that you have never been to San Francisco based on this sin that I'm showing here, which I think is the dumbest sin you've ever written, I know you know that San Francisco is a real place. Unless, of course, you can give me a single reason your speech is worth saving. Movie attempts the Noah story with a technology spin, but refuses to do the part where- Next. There have been a couple of times when I have almost sinned this movie for having PAL create so much infrastructure and so quickly, but the truth is, when slash if the singularity happens, we will not be ready for how fast AI changes the entire structure of the world around us. So, since this actually feels about right, I'll just tag another single sin on my sense of doom from the inevitable singularity. Well, you have to be ready for it, and I'm also going to give this my award since I don't see how this is something wrong with this film. Somehow, the Mitchells are the very last people on Earth left uncaptured by the robots, because they hid in a freezer. And the robots overhead scanned and found no human. I guess no other humans tried to hide? Or was the cold the reason the robots couldn't... I can't do this with a straight face. The fact that this movie's protagonists are the only humans left uncaptured is a mathematical impossibility. But that's what the movie's established here. And as promised, your phones. I don't care how heavy duty those boots are, you are not curb stomping your cellular device into these kinds of pieces in three seconds. But the movie said that he was able to, so you're just taking this stuff seriously again, when it's not meant to be. How could I forget my anniversary present? So he bought them all screwdrivers so they'd be prepared, but he only bought them Robertson head screwdrivers? This family is completely f***ed if they ever encounter a flathead or a Phillips screw. To say nothing of Alan! Yes, that's the type of screwdriver they have, and it also helps Rick and Linda escape from their cages in the climax of the film. First, we use robot parts to disguise ourselves as the enemy. This Diary exposition is necessary later on in the movie so that we can know what Katie's plan is to take down the robots. Oh my gosh, the robots are defective. It's true, and specifically in a way that makes them do whatever you say. And not just one of them, both of them in the exact same way. Praise be to the plot gods! Like in previous videos, you seem to just be telling us what you see on the screen and not exactly pointing out something wrong with it. Glad those robots are gone. <laughs> Eric and Deborah bought 5,000 are so good in this movie, I'm not even going to slap them with a silly sidekick appears for comic relief cliche. Oh, shit. I think now that I've said it, Cindy actually has to sin it. Well, just know I started this sin trying to give a sin all. Promise. Yet another case of Jeremy sinning something he likes. These humans are hiding the shame of their nakedness from a non-existent camera instead of the actual neighbors. But you do know that animated films have a way of censoring a character's private part, right? Cutting your peanut butter sandwich into four squares instead of two triangles. Yeah. So? This comic relief dog drinking trash water should be dead. And I, I kind of wish he was, from a comedy standpoint. And if Machi did die, the Mitchells wouldn't have a way to take out the robots, since most of them are unable to figure out what he is. Or is it Hilarious, but that car is totaled now, and everyone flew through the windshield and died. No! So this robot gets impaled conveniently, and then these other three just can't track objects in spatial permanence? Why the hell are they giving up right now? 
I think the reason why the robots didn't immediately find the Mitchells is because their car is parked between two other cars. Man, they signaled that they'd caught the last human ages ago, but the human delivery pods are taking forever to bring all those souls home. And that's probably because it took longer to bring people from other countries into Silicon Valley. Um, actually, you missed a few. A YouTube comment seen on every single Sins video in the history of time somehow makes it into the script. Jimmy says something random cliche. Zebulon, scan those people for flaws. Cowardly, weaker than a small bird. It works better if you do them one at a time and make a joke about it and maybe follow it with a ding sound instead of a buzzer. Amateurs. Well, buzzers are usually used as a way of pointing out something wrong or something that a character doesn't like. Heck, I don't even use a ding sound when adding a sin in this series. The impaled robot saw them driving away at night. How the F did you get this image? Says the Mitchells were seen driving at night while literally showing a scene of it being daytime. Nice job. Who would have thought a tech company wouldn't have our best interest at heart? <laughs> 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 <sighs> Yet another moment of Jeremy sending something he likes. Okay, just one last thing. I can see the possibility that the floor models might have been powered up, but is this also suggesting that all the inventory that was still boxed and powered off somehow came alive? Like all these drones, how did they even get out of their packaging? My guess is that the appliances were able to get out of the boxes by themselves because they're sentient. Bullshit. These Furbies all got out here in space perfectly like this with those tiny little waddle feet. Again, I say to you, bullshit. I'm pretty sure the filmmakers did this on purpose so that the movie can give the audience a surprise. And to be honest, a lot of things that you see in movies are things that the filmmakers actually did on purpose. Papa Mitchell fires an arrow basically at his child's head. Well, the Furby was getting ready to kill Aaron and Rick had a bow and arrow with him, so what do you think would have been the better move here? Why does the giant smart Furby have an actual laser gun in its mouth? Because all of the other Furbies have that as well. Using your tractor beam ray on the pulley system instead of the actual threat. Well, it probably would have been too heavy to pull on the giant Furby elder. Purple glasses, woman. Why did you save me? Come on, Eric. You just called her mom in the last scene. This is like when my cousin's kids started calling her Susan all the time. Out of Next. As they drive towards Silicon Valley, I have to ask, why are they using headlights? The Mitchells are taking the back roads to avoid capture, and they're obviously using the headlights so they can see since it's dark outside. So you mean to tell me that you've never driven at night before? Are these killbots manifesting out of thin air? I swear to God, I'm adding a thousand sins if someone even says the word nanobytes or nanotech or nanonut muffins. Like I've said two times before, you say you'll give a bunch of sins for something, but you don't since it doesn't happen. It's time to tear the Mitchell family up. She seems much too fixated on this family. Her goal is to rid Earth of humanity, and she's completed 99.999999999999% of that goal. Well, the Mitchells are the only humans that haven't been caught, and Pal wants them to be caught so that they can't interfere with their plans. You're not a loving movie dad if you don't cover your child with a blanket or coat and rub their hair. Yeah, so how exactly is that wrong here? Is that the posies? <laughs> yes, Linda, that actually is the posies. In the literally hundreds of millions of people in the ship, you just happen to spot your neighbors at the exact moment they were being placed in the ship, despite them being captured a full two days ago. Pointing things out on the screen. Also, this simple old camcorder and it's 50,000 times zoom. Yeah, so? Now we're sneaking into the bad guy headquarters disguised as evil robots, and this is the Lego movie! Oh, that's ironic because they're both Phil Lord and Christopher Miller movies. I thought Pal sent the black nanobot robots out to find and kill the Mitchells. She even said I've got a job for you, but it looks like they're just acting as guards. Well, during the sneak-in, Pal suspects that the Mitchells are nearby and possibly disguised as robots, which they are. So the reason for the black robots acting like guards is that they're on the lookout for any robots acting erratically. Man, these guys do that an awful lot. I have to feel like constantly repairing the floor is going to add to your overhead. But we never see the robots doing that, so does it really matter? They got out of there? Yes. It's camcorder and it's ever-ready plot advancement expositional starting video locations. Well, this helps Katie realize that Rick had to sacrifice his dream to take care of her and she feels regret for lying to him afterwards. How far back do these go? Typically a few hours worth of footage. In this case, her entire life. Yeah. So? This movie cares not the slightest about justifying its conveniences. Not only do Rick and Mark get seated right next to each other, but Mark just happens to be pepping himself up with Katie's movies at that very moment. I mean, if you're just gonna convenience that hard, why not just convenience a secondary kill code involving the robots not being able to tell the difference between a dog and a pig? Sorry, that was mean. I know you'd never do something that cheap and easy. Oh, that's ironic because you've said mean things to movies before and also saw Sonic the Hedgehog starting in the climax as cheap and lazy. I'm a full-grown cop now. And one day, I hope that you can get to know the cop that I've become. Because I love you, Sarge. For a goofy YouTube video, this film certainly does take a turn towards very specifically serious and emotional themes that just so happen to be directly related to this moment in the plot, doesn't it? 
Which is correct, since the movie is based on Rick and Katie's relationship. So how are you faulting the movie for this? Also, movie within a movie, skip! Really? Without this, Rick wouldn't have reflected on his actions or realized that he needed to get over his technophobia to take out the robots. How is no one stopping her? Pal would be evil at cinema sense. What? Why is there a convenient ledge running along some of these prison cubes? It's pretty convenient. Probably for convenience, like you just said. W, 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 dot. There isn't a sigh loud enough for this old person doesn't know how to use the internet cliche. Rick was probably like 15 when the internet started its infancy. Well, this movie doesn't tell us when Rick was born, so where are you getting that from? I saw your movie. I should have watched it a lot sooner. We do not have time for this! Yeah, we do. Katie and Rick aren't in any danger right now, so he's showing her that he now has more of an appreciation for her passion. Where earlier mom defeated the robots with love, now dad and daughter will defeat the robots with love and some singing. It's almost like there was no real threat all along. Really? Pal kidnapped almost the entire human race and was going to send them into space to die, so there definitely was a threat in this film. Not spreading your PB or J to the edges of the bread. Personally, I don't care how peanut butter and jelly is spread on a sandwich. Here's the thing though, Pal was software. The single phone kind of represented her, but Pal has clearly been described as a smart personal assistant, so destroying this one phone won't kill her. He's basically f***ing Ultron, man. This can't be how they kill her. While the pal we see in this movie reprogrammed all the robots, so killing her here will shut down almost all the robots for good. Wish we didn't have to go, but... Oh, I'm good with going. So, one final scoop! <sighs> Man, I bet if you have kids you've recently dropped off for their first year of college, this part here probably gives you all the feels and makes you cry. Suckers. I really don't see how this is something wrong with this movie. When I started college last year, I was looking forward to it, but I also felt sad when saying goodbye to my parents and sister. So I guess you missed Katie's character arc, huh? And here's the end result, everybody. This in total is 207, and the sentence will be captured by PAL. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.